Hello, welcome back again to the course. And uh, in this video, I just wanna go through the whole connection setup when you are doing church live streaming. So I'm gonna talk a bit about lighting, uh, cameras that you are suitable for church live streaming. I'm gonna talk about capture cards. I'm gonna talk about how to connect sound. I'm gonna talk about opening the software and also showing you some of the settings there. So without wasting time, let us start with uh, lighting. So if you are going to be live streaming church services, lighting also is very important regardless of what camera you are using. So when you enter inside the church, most of the time churches will have their own light uh, setup already going on there. But uh, if it is just really like a small church that doesn't really have good lighting, it means you have to figure out also uh, your lighting situation. So what I usually do myself most of the time, if I go to a church and I see that there isn't really like enough lighting that is able to capture really good video, I will always add my own lighting. You know, most people actually ask me to say, why is your live streaming always looking good? It is because number one, for any video to look nice, lighting has to be, it has to be good. So I usually add some additional lights in the church if I see that it's not enough so that I can really capture really clear images. All right, so that is lighting. And uh, with regards to what kind of lighting you need for the church live streaming, uh, you need to consider the capacity of the church. How big is the church itself? I can't really say this is what lighting you need to use, but you just have to, you know, go to the church before you go and live streaming and check if lighting is good. And uh, you'll be the one to know how much lighting you will need. After you check that lighting is good, the next thing that you need to check is uh, your cameras. So what are the suitable cameras for live streaming? So if you are starting out, uh, it is a small church, there's always something for every level. So if you are just starting out, uh, the cheapest cameras that I can recommend, remember in the course I have, I have already said that you need a camera that has got a clean HDMI output and also having a dedicated microphone jack where you can input sound, right? So if you have any camera that has got a clean HDMI output and also having a dedicated sound, that camera will do live streaming. So with regards to which one exactly should you use for church live streaming? So if you are starting out, uh, you don't have enough budget. There is this small camera that I have been using myself, uh, even as a second camera, you know, it is called Legria HF506. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. So this is one of the first cameras that you can actually consider as a church. You know, it has got a clean HDMI, you know, it really produces good video. It has even a microphone jack, so you can actually really input sound to the camera. So this is the first one that you can actually consider. And the good part is you can actually plug this camera to the power so you can shoot the whole day. This small camera doesn't even overheat. And the second choice, if you really have some good money, you can look at cameras like the Lumix G7, Lumix GH4, Lumix GH5. People, they think the GH4 is a very small camera. Now this is a very big camera because it has got, uh, you can put your HDMI cables, you can put an extra monitor, you can exchange lenses, you can put any type of lenses that you want. So I prefer, even when I'm doing live streaming, I prefer to use a camera like this. They are very good. They have clean HDMI, they've got a microphone input. At the same time, they have interchangeable lenses. So you can actually really change lenses with accordance to, you know, uh, how big the room is. So if it's like, it's a very big room, you don't want to put the camera next to the pastor. So your camera has to be at the back so you can really like use a long lens there so that you don't disturb people. So that is a good part about these DSLR cameras, you know? So I have said in the course though that uh, the main problem with them is the battery because they can, you know, like the GH5 or the GH4 or the, the Lumix G7 can only go for two hours, you know, on a single charge. So at some point you have to change the battery. So if it is in the middle of the church service, it means you will disturb the viewers. So you have to make sure that you get a dummy battery so that you can actually plug it to the power. So whichever camera that you are using, if it's a DSLR, make sure you get a dummy battery for it so that you it can be powered throughout the whole service without any indication that it's gonna power off. All right, so that is option camera number two. So option camera number three is cameras like this Blackmagic. You can get the 2.5K or the 4K. In fact, I prefer these ones a lot more than, you know, like the other ones, especially for church live streaming because these cameras, they come already with a dedicated uh, power supply, they have got SDI output, 
So you can just get uh, SDI to HDMI converter if you are using HDMI, but it has got SDI output, which is like really um, the best, more than even HDMI. So it has got uh, input, sound input here. It has got a microphone here. It has got a remote. So this camera can run for longer hours without overheating. In fact, it can run for the whole 12 hours without overheating. So it's the one that I would really recommend if you have some money because it has got interchangeable lenses as well. So you can change lenses to get different types of looks in your church. But if you have good money and you have really, your church is really big a little bit, you can get uh, some of these camcorders like the, the NX cams. You can get some of these camcorders that I've been using. These are the cameras that I use in the church mostly these camcorders you know they have a good zoom lens they are really good they have got uh, nd filters inside they are overall dedicated cameras for video recording so these are the cameras that are really dedicated for live streaming so if you really want to reach like the highest level of you know church setup live stream i would recommend these cameras all right so after you figure out which camera you are going to use in the church, the next thing is sound. Sound is very important, you know. People can forgive you for having bad quality video than bad quality sound. So sound is very important. Mostly the church will always have like a mixer for sound. So they connect all their microphone and all their PA system is connected to that mixer. So you need to tap sound from the mixer straight to your camera. This is how I usually connect my sound when I'm doing live streaming for church. So in the church, sometimes we can have like three cameras that are rolling or four cameras. The main camera, the one that is looking at the preacher, that is where I connect my sound. The thing is, when you connect sound directly to the computer, you might have lip syncing problem. So it is always advisable that you connect your sound directly to the camera. All right. So um, different mixers are, will always have like different outputs and stuff. So every mixer has got uh, a record output where you can output sound of all the connections that have happened to that mixer, whether it is microphones for the choir together with the pastor, together with the one who is giving announcement, everything will be connected to the mixer, but it will have one output that has, which sends out a mixed audio uh, out. So that is where you tap sound. So if that output uses this kind of, uh, if this is the output, you need to get a converter to the microphone jack, uh, to the 3.5 millimeter microphone jack that you connect to the camera. Or if the output is one of these XLR output, then you have to get something like a converter, like this cable. I don't know if you can see it properly. This cable, which is like a male XLR, uh, and then you just connect it to, to the other output that goes from the mixer. So make sure you tap sound directly from the mixer straight to the camera. All right. So once the sound is connected to the camera, the next thing that you do is to connect your camera now to the capture card. So let's talk about which capture card you need to use. So there is a lot of different types of capture cards, you know, and um, all these capture cards, they are really good. They are really good. Some will work better with your system that you are using. Some might not really work better with the system, but the ones that I feel like they are universally working well. And if you are on tight budget, I'd recommend these small capture cards. If you are on budget, I would recommend these small capture cards. So this one, it's a USB, it just goes directly to the computer. And this one is where the HDMI from the camera comes in. And uh, if you have like two cameras or three cameras, but you, can, you can't afford the bigger capture cards or the bigger encoders like the Atom Mini, uh, Pro or the video switchers, you can actually buy even three of these, all of them connect them to the computer and add them as single inputs in vMix. I'll, I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. So you can just connect three of these if you are having three cameras or you can connect two of them if you are using two cameras or you can connect one of them if you are using one camera. So these are the first capture cards that uh, I would recommend. In fact, there are many different types of capture cards in this category and very cheap. So these are the first capture cards that you can look at if you are on tight budget, if you are just a small church that is starting. But if you have enough budget, it is always going to be better if you got the Atem Mini because it can take four cameras at once and it is hassle-free. You can actually even connect it to 
an external monitor so you can watch all the cameras at once. All right, so you can just connect all your cameras that you are using to the Atel Mini. That is if you are using three cameras and up and, and over because having a lot of these capture cards, it might just really like take so much ports from your computer. You know, if one capture card shakes kind of, and then all the system is going to be disturbed here and there. But if you can manage it, that is your starting point. It still works fine, but I would really, really advise that you get something like Atel Mini Pro. Even if you are using two cameras or one camera, I think um, getting the Atel Mini Pro is a wiser decision so that as you add more cameras to your church, at least you have many ports. But if it is a bigger church that uh, maybe you are using seven cameras or six cameras, you can see the Atel Mini has got only four. So you can get another Atel Mini Extreme that has got eight inputs. But if you are really like a big, big church, you can look at, uh, you know, like a traditional video switcher that you can connect many cameras there, even 16 cameras. So with how you connect the capture card, just like the way I showed you in the course, um, you take the HDMI, you plug it in your output. So I'm using this one as an output, right? And then I'm just gonna switch on the camera. The camera is on. And then after you have connected your sound to the camera, you have connected your HDMI output and the light is fine and also the sound situation is fine. Then you connect the other side of the HDMI to whatever capture card that you are using. And then you connect the other part of the capture card, the USB part to the computer. So if you are using the Atom Mini, you can just connect your camera to the Atom Mini. And then from the Atom Mini, you can use a USB type C from the Atom Mini to your computer. But if you are using one of these capture cards, you can just connect the HDMI coming from your camera to the HDMI coming to this small capture card. And then from this small capture card, you can connect it directly to the computer. So after everything is connected to the computer, the next thing is to figure out which software you are going to use for your live stream. All right, so there are different types of live streaming software that you can get, but the one that I recommend mostly, especially if you are doing church live streaming, is the vMix, because it is laid down like a traditional video switcher and you can add so many things, because I know when you are doing church live streaming, you might need to add Zoom uh, audience, you might need to add scriptures, you might need to add a few other things, and vMix has got a way of dealing with these things in a very professional way. So it is the one that I recommend. So vMix, it's a paid software, but uh, if you are inside this course, obviously there's a video where I have described how you can use it for free uh, for the rest of your life. All right, so if vMix is the one that you are used, uh, you are using, that you have chosen to use, then go ahead and uh, open the software. All right, so I'm gonna just open vMix so that I can show you some other stuff in vMix as well. So after vMix opens, the first thing that you need to do is to, you know, add your cameras. Make sure you have the feed before you start adding other stuff. So I'm just gonna go input and then cameras, and then I'm gonna go to camera and look for the black magic. And since you connected your audio straight to the camera, it means on your audio settings here, you have also to choose the black magic here. Uh, so that you are using the same audio that is coming with your camera. And then after that is done, you can just press OK. So you have your feed now in the computer. So once the feed is there, uh, you can just click on, uh, the on, on the audio button for the Atom Mini so that you can have audio inside your production. So you can see audio is there. So just make sure that the button for audio is on as well for channel one because that is where your main camera is connected. So after you have the signal, everything is connected and you are ready to go live. So in terms of the streaming settings, uh, let me show you something quickly on the streaming settings. I know I spoke about this in the course again, I'm gonna speak about it now. So uh, for you to start going live, you have to actually know which platform you want to live stream to. Do you want to live stream to Facebook? Do you want to live stream to a YouTube? Do you want to live stream to LinkedIn? So let's say, for example, you want to live stream to Facebook, right? So you just go to the stream settings here. 
All right, once you open your streaming settings, the next thing that you wanna make sure first is to make sure that um, you are sending, you are connecting the platform to which you want to send your live stream to. So if you want to send it to Facebook, for example, you can uh, go to the destination here and choose Facebook, and then you go to the Facebook settings, right? Uh, just waiting for the Facebook settings to open. Once Facebook settings has opened, the first thing that you need to do is to log into your profile. And then after you have logged into your profile, you have to come here to the location and tell Vmix where you want to live stream to. Do you want to share the stream on your personal profile? If you have a page that is under your name, you can choose that page here. You can see I have a page here, Unify Inventive, uh, Unify Film Class. This is my page. And I also have a group here, Unify Film Class as my group. So now I have to choose where am I sending my stream to. So now I'm going to send it to my group, right? So you have to make sure that one is selected and you are sending your stream to the right audience. And then stream two, just leave it to new stream. And then you can write the title of your stream here and also the description here. Once you are done, just say create stream. Once the stream has been created, you can just say close. And if you want to live stream to YouTube as well, you can just uh, go to number two here. And on number two, you can put your YouTube settings. So you can just go to YouTube settings, just like the way we did with Facebook. And then here you can choose, um, you can log in first. After you are logged into your YouTube, then you can come back here and put the title and also the privacy. Do you want to put it unlisted? You want to put it private or you want to put it public? So make sure uh, public is selected and then you click OK. And then after that is done, before you hit that live stream, uh, you need to come to the stream quality here. Right, this is so important. This is so important. So the stream quality, it will determine how smooth your live streaming is going to be, right? So if you select like um, a higher stream quality, like let's say 2.5 megabits per second uh, in half HD, or let's say you want to live stream in 1080p uh, in full HD. This is where I see a lot of people uh, make a uh, uh, mistakes. Remember, people who are watching your live stream, most of them, they'll watch your live stream on their phones, right? They'll not really watch them in bigger TV. So the stream quality that you set here, it will determine how smooth your live stream is going to be. So if you like set it to, let's say, 1080p, you know, to full HD, full HD needs a lot of data, right? It will need like uh, uh, seven megabytes per second. And if you are streaming to two platforms, so it will need like 14 megabits per second, the upload speed. So make sure when you are setting your stream quality here, uh, for me, I usually just set it at um, 720p. And I usually, depending on the internet speed, so make sure you also do uh, internet speed test, right? Uh, before you actually set the quality there, go to the internet first and type there, uh, internet speed tests so that uh, you know the upload and download speed of your internet. So you see here, it is checking the speed. So you just really like wait for it. This Now it is testing the download speed. <clears throat> so we're just gonna wait for it. So the download speed is 15.8 megabits per second. Now it is testing the upload speed. Just wait for it. So you can see uh, your internet speed here, the download speed is 15.8 and the upload speed is 12.1 megabits per second. So this 12.1 megabits per second is the one which is important because you remember now you are uploading the video. So if it is 12 megabits per second, you go back to Vmix, uh, you go back to stream settings here, right? So if it is 12 megabits per second, you need to use what we call a 50% headroom rule. So if it is 12 megabits per second, 
you have to make sure that your stream settings is only half of that 12 megabits per second, which is six megabits per second. So if you combine stream one and stream two, both of them should add up to six megabits per second. This will ensure that your live stream is not going to be interrupted. In case something happens to the internet, maybe the speed drops to nine megabits per second, you still be at six megabits per second, it will not be affected. So if I come here to stream one, I'm gonna select 720p and make sure I choose 2.5 megabits per second, right? And then stream two, I'll just click this button here which says use stream one settings. So I'm, I'm just gonna use stream one settings which is also 2.5 megabits per second. So 2.5 plus 2.5, that is five megabits per second, which means you are well under uh, the recommended, you are, you are five megabits per second, your upload speed is 12. So you have assurance that there is nothing that is going to happen to your live stream. Even if internet dropped to eight megabits per second, remember you are at five megabits per second. So the stream quality here, it's very important. So after you have set your streaming quality, you can just say save and close. And when you are ready to start live streaming, you can just click here on start live stream and then it will start streaming. All right, that is, Number one. The other thing is if you are live streaming a church service, you know in the church they can have uh, projectors or they can have church monitors where you can also show what the viewers are seeing. So in case maybe the pastor is preaching and then they put a scripture, those scriptures should appear in the TVs. Or maybe you want to show the stream that is happening in the TV so that people can actually monitor what is happening or you can monitor what is happening right when you put the scripture that's the scripture that everybody else is seeing even on the internet and also in, even in the church so that people can follow at the same time right so in order for you to do that you need to have your computer connected to the external monitors of your church let's say for example this is the monitor for your church this is the monitor that you are using in the church you can connect this monitor directly to your laptop right or to your computer that you are using so if it is two monitors you can get a splitter that can connect uh, one output from the computer and then it has got two hdmi output that can go to each monitor so if you are using four monitors you can get a splitter that has got four output and one input so you just connect it on the hdmi output of the computer and then if you want that uh, stream to be displayed if you want your stream to be displayed you just go to here on the top here in vmix where it says full screen once you click that button you will see that your feed is now going to show also on your external monitors so people can actually watch what you are seeing all right and the other thing when you are doing live streaming the other important part is adding scriptures to your live stream. So, which is very easy. There's a lot of softwares that you can use to add scriptures to your stream. But the one that is free and user-friendly is called Bible Show. There's Easy Worship, there's Bible Show, there's other uh, softwares that you can use. But the one that, uh, which is free, hassle-free also, it is Bible, uh, it is called Bible Show. So, just go to your computer. I'm just gonna minimize this screen a little bit. And then I'm gonna look for the software Bible Show. Let me just set it here. And make sure you have it installed in your computer as well. So I have already sent the link. If you're watching this uh, video inside the course, then the Bible Show software is there. Just say allow. If it brings this message here. All right, so this is your Bible Show software. So here you will see that um, it has got uh, Bible versions. If you want to add more versions, you can just click this button here. It will take you to this page here, which says Bibles. And then if you, you want different types of versions of the Bible, so you can, you know, go through all these versions and just click install whichever versions that you want. So if you like to keep the KJV, which comes with the software, it's not a problem. Just go here and look for the scripture maybe Lamentations, and then you can put the chapter, uh, the verse. And if that is the verse that you want to display, uh, you can just come to where it says themes and choose a theme here that you want to use. All right, so all these are different types of themes that you can use to display your Bible. So if I can click on this theme and come to this button here, come to the scriptures here, 
and just play that scripture that you wanted to you know broadcast i'll just say play you'll see that it will show up in this small screen here so in order for it to be shown in vmix as well what you need to do is to just go to uh, configure and then come to where it says ndi output make sure this button here is checked after that button is checked then just come to vmix just come to vmix and then go to add input then go to ndi forward slash desktop capture and then on the ndi here you will see bible show it will show here just just click on it and then click ok and then you'll see that now your scripture is also added in the vmix input so if you want to show it to the audience uh, if you want to show it to the audience you just use one of these numbers here these are overlay channels so you can just overlay it on channel one and you'll see that your scripture will be displayed on the screens in the church but if you don't want this tile which is like full screen it's not a problem uh, just remove the scripture by pressing on one again then go to the software bible show and then come to themes in the themes here you see that it has got different themes then just look the one that has got like a lower third right like this one over here this is the lower third so i'm just gonna click on it you'll see that now your scripture will be showing in the lower third so if i come back to vmix and click on number one again you'll see now that your scripture is a lower third which is beautiful all right if you want to remove the scripture just click on that overlay channel again so if you go back to the bible show you can come to where it says um download here where it says download uh, themes when you click there you see here on this other side you see there will be different many themes here that you can download to be added to your you know bible show collection so the one that if you want if you are going to use lower third a lot the one that has got a lot of lower thirds is uh theme number six collection number six you see all these different themes you see all these different themes that you can choose from so if you like them you can just click download and install so it will download that theme you see the progress here it will download all those themes to your computer and they will automatically come in this center box here and then if you come down here you'll see all these different types of themes so if you want to use let's say for example this theme you just click on it it will come maybe this one maybe this one you can just go through different types of them and they will automatically update also in the input here so if you click on number one you'll see that your scripture is coming so this is how you do live streaming in the church if you have any questions just drop them in the comment section below i'll sure to attend to them and uh yeah i'll see you in the next video this is it mr wise over and out